wanted to share with you this project that I designed exclusively for Jewel School on Jewelry TV. Um, this is a sliders bracelet and it's something that I, I love the little sliders. I think they're so much fun to play with and uh, so I wanted to, I knew I wanted to incorporate that in. I knew I wanted a bracelet uh, and I wanted something that was going to be a little flashy. You know how I, a girl likes her sparkle so I've got crystals involved of course. Uh, so let's take a closer look at the bracelet and see exactly what I'm talking about. So here is the actual finished piece right here. This is what the kits uh, in the purple version look like. It's purple and silver. Um, this was the kits that we sold on Jewelry TV. And then the gold version, uh, I, I actually don't even have a finished, completed gold version, but it's this. So this was the final um, slider color combo that I decided on and so there's five of this color combo in there. But the reason I wanted to show you this is first of all to show you that I went through a lot of different color combos before I kind of decided on on the finals here. Um, but I also wanted to show you how pretty and fun this looks looks when you have all sorts of different colors in here. I think it's a very fun slider to make. It's very easy to make and so you know like with anything that you buy off Jewel School, when you buy the kit, sure you're buying one set of beads for one bracelet, but then you've got that set of instructions that you can then go and use and make many more pieces of jewelry. So it has worth far beyond the kit because then you've got the pattern to make the bracelet over and over again. Um, I think this is a very cool look when they're spaced out like this. I think it's a cool look when they're clustered like this. Uh, you can, I played with things like um, let's see here. I have at least one in here. Oh, here's one that I actually didn't do crystals on. I'd used pearls for that top edge instead of crystals. So if you are a little less flashy, you can certainly use pearls instead. Um, I played with using all the same color seed bead. Uh, and then I also played with ones using more than one color of seed bead. Uh, I think it's easier to see here in so this is one where I used, I think, all one color seed bead. Oh, nope, there's still a different one. Well, anyway, you can see that I, I played and I played and I played and I made a ton of these sliders. I also want to mention to you that this would be a really terrific necklace piece also. So while the kit that you got in your uh, from Jewel School is a bracelet, this makes a fabulous necklace piece as well. So here's how this whole thing is, is made. These sliders are made individually. Uh, there is a pearl center that we make first and then we build up waves of seed beads, connect them along the top edge, add the crystal in, and then we go back and add a seed bead between each one of the pearls on this side and on this side to kind of just tighten everything up, solidify it, and then you have a slider. For the bracelet itself, this is a simple herringbone rope that we made here. And the herringbone itself is uh, tubular herringbone using six beads, so six beads around, so it's three stitches. And I already have done a video on how to do tubular herringbone, and I will pop a link up for that video. So if you need uh, the step-by-step -step instructions on how to make the tubular herringbone rope part of this, uh, go watch that video first, work on your little rope, and then we can come back and work on the sliders. A couple of other pieces that are done uh, that are in this particular in this particular uh, bracelet, I made little end caps to just kind of bring bring it all together, make it look very professional and nice. This also keeps these sliders from coming off your bracelet by having those end caps there. So that's a, it is very simple to end cap to make. We'll make those in this video. And then one of my very favorite toggles to use is an all seed bead toggle. So this is my peyote tube toggle. I will uh, pop a link up for that. There is a separate video telling you how to make that little peyote tube. And then we will make uh, the, the um, what is this, a circle to go around it. And uh, then to make this a little more decorative, all I did was peyote stitch around it so that A, it would hold a little bit better and B, it would be pretty, a little bit more decorative and pretty. So all these things are very simple by themselves and we're just going to bring them all together. I want to point one more thing out though about these end caps. 
While I wanted end caps to keep these from coming off, it occurred to me that actually if you finished this bracelet off without the end caps, you could have an entire family of sliders, like the way I do, and mix and match them by taking them off the ends and then just putting on the ones that you wanted to wear that particular day. So just know that that's an option for you too, that if you wanted to make this a bracelet that was interchangeable, just omit those end caps and all of a sudden you've got an interchangeable bracelet, okay? So let's get down to actually making one of these adorable little sliders. I'm gonna leave one out here for us to look at while, while we work on this. Your base is all Swarovski pearls. So these are three millimeter Swarovski pearls. We are gonna do the most simple form of right angle weave, which is just a single row. Um, so I'm picking up four beads. I'm bringing them down, so I'm leaving myself about a four to six inch tail below them. And from the tail end, I'm going back up through all four of those beads again. because so I wanna turn them into a circle. You'll notice that I still uh, have this little half loop of thread, so to really turn them into a circle, what you have to do is come back to that tail end and go through that first bead one more time. Now, as you tighten all that thread up, there's our circle. And what I'm really looking at here, because this is right angle weave, is I like to think of this as little apartments. Here's my floor, there's my ceiling, there's my right wall, and there's my left wall, okay? I wanna get to the outside edge, which to me is the ceiling, so I can build the next apartment on top of this. So I'm gonna, this is my working thread over here on this end, so I'm gonna pass through two beads. I'm passing through the wall, and then across through the roof. So now I've got my working thread coming out on one side of it, and my tail thread is coming out over here on the other side. Because this is, we're making apartments, this ceiling is gonna be the floor of the next apartment. So because this is shared, I only have to pick up three beads this time because the one that my thread is coming out of is part of this apartment. So, oop, here we go, there we go. The pearls can be a little bit, they, they will, the holes get a little blocked up sometimes, but it's easy enough if you just kind of wiggle your um, needle, they'll go through. So I'm gonna pass back through the same pearl my thread is exiting. You have to go, I, I refer to it as chasing my thread. Um, I wanna go in the side that the thread is not. Okay, tighten all that up and see how that worked. So now we've got uh, a floor, wall, wall, ceiling. So that's the second floor apartment there. Now I wanna get it back up to that ceiling so that I can then make the third floor apartment. So I'm just gonna pass through the wall and through that ceiling. Okay, this is gonna be a shared bead again that I'm coming out of, which means that I need to pick up three more. Like so. And then I'm just gonna to move to that outside edge. You're gonna to wanna to be adding these units until you have five of them total. So we've got a couple more to do here. The little holes can be hard to see sometimes, especially because I'm working with cream on cream here. Sorry about that. All right, there's those three. Pass up and over so I can get to the next unit. This will be our last full unit that we're gonna make. One, two, three, okay. I still wanna get to the outside edge when I finish this one. Each of these sliders takes 18 pearls. So you can either count out 18, which is what I had done, or if you wanna count how many units you have, you wanna count the sticky outies on one side. So here I've got one, two, three, four, five sticky outies, means I've got five units. 
For the sixth unit, this is where we are going to actually turn it into a circle. And one of the reasons that I had you kind of work out to this outside edge is, if you'll notice here, on this edge, my working thread's coming out. On this edge, my tail thread's coming out. Those two beads, I want to now attach together into their own apartment. So I'm going to kind of fold this like a taco so that those two beads with the threads are sitting side by side. So this is going to be a wall, and this is going to be a wall. What I need to add is a ceiling and a floor. So I'm picking up a bead for the ceiling. I'm going to pass down, this is my working thread, so I'm coming out here. I'm going to pass down the opposite wall. So there's the ceiling. And then I'm picking up one more bead here. There it is, for the floor, and passing in a counterclockwise direction through the other wall. And then that completes all of this, and that's our initial inside ring. Now this last unit is typically pretty loosey-goosey, so I actually continue around those four beads one more time to tighten it up with my thread. Um, I just have a hard time uh, getting those nice and tight in there, and so you probably will too, or at least many of you will. I know that I am not the tightest beater in the world, but there we go. So this just kind of helps solidify the thread paths as you go around those four again. Okay. So at this point, one of the things that I like to do is I actually like to go ahead and end this tail thread off now because this just drives me crazy. And so we are going to, I'm going to thread this up with another needle. I almost always have two needles on my board when I am beading. One is specifically to end off these tail threads or to start a new thread because that way you don't have to unthread the needle that you've got going. Um, writing a weave is typically a really perfect stitch for you just to be able to pass through beads in a circular motion and then reverse direction on the next unit. So you're going, you're basically working in figure eights as you do this. And so you don't even have to tie knots. However, I know a lot of people are very not, they, this makes them uncomfortable to not, to not knot. Um, so if you happen to be one of those people, let me show you how you're going to do it. But in general, what I like to do is go around at least two full units with my thread. And like right now, I would feel comfortable about cutting this off. But if you want to create a knot, what you're going to do is wherever your thread is coming out, there's already threads there that are holding the beads together. So you're just going to loop under those threads with your needle. Pull down so you've got just a little bit of loop of thread left. Pass your needle through there. Does not matter which way you go through there. And then when you tighten that down, tighten down nice and slow so that it doesn't accidentally catch any of the beads. Okay? And then you would move another bead away, tie another knot, move another bead away, tie a third knot, and then move at least one or two beads away from that last knot, and then you can end off your thread, cut it off like so, okay? So now I just have the one thread attached and I'm ready for the next step of our slider, which is I'm gonna pass through one of these side beads. So I wanna be coming out one of the sticky outies. Uh, because I'm a right-hander, I'm doing it on the right-hand side. If you're a lefty, feel free to do it on the left. Then I'm gonna pick up three seed beads and I am just gonna pass through the next sticky outie pearl. And I'm just going to do this all the way around. See how that, you're going to have one that's going to kind of pop out so that you, it creates a little sticky outy bridge right there. So I'm picking up three, passing through the next pearl. Something I want to mention to you is I have made a bunch of these. I showed you my big pile. So I'm kind of able to do this without a form. But this can be a lot easier if you have a dowel of some sort for the center. And something that I find very easy to use are some wood knitting needles. I bought a really cheap set of wood knitting needles. The size 10 happens to fit perfectly inside this ring right here, like so. And then that just gives you, it makes it a little bit easier for you to hold on to it, okay? So feel free to 
use a dowel for this part if it makes it easier on you. One thing that you just have to watch out for if you're using a dowel is make sure that your thread isn't catching around the dowel tip, which is why I'm kind of bringing it down kind of towards the middle of the dowel here. Okay. We can um, speed this spot up. All right, so here's my last one. Then I want to do the exact same thing on the other side, but I need to get over there. So what you're going to do is one of these pearls that's in the center, the hole is going horizontal. So I'm just going to pop through the pearl, okay, like so. Make sure that it's not looping anywhere, not catching on those picos. Then I'll pass through one of those sticky outies on this side. And I'll do the same thing along this edge. Add those three bead picots all the way around. Oh, actually, that's not what I'm doing. Duh, Jill. Um, what I'm doing here, actually, and what's funny is I do this every couple of uh, these sliders that I make. I do this to myself every time. Um, OK, so what I'm really doing is I'm picking up a single seed bead. And then I'm passing through the tip seed bead of that set of three on the other side. There we go. See how it's now centering in? And then I pick up another seed bead. And I pass through the sticky outy pearl. So that's what we're going to do all the way around. Okay, now I'm adding the last bead here that joins all those sets of three together. And what I'm going to do next is I want to get my bead so my needle so it's coming out that tip seed bead in the center there. So that means I have to go up one of the seed beads and then across the center here. Now here's one of the spots where you have a design decision to make. You can either, and also at this point it's a pretty solid thing to hold on to, so I usually get rid of the dowel at that point. Um, it's pretty solid. So you have a design decision to make. You can either use an alternate color seed bead or the same color seed bead. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pick up, in my case I'm going to use an alternate color, a seed bead, a crystal, and a seed bead. And then I'm going to go straight across to the next center seed bead. So I'm laying those crystals in with a seed bead on either side here as I do so. The spacing is such that it's a little on the wide side for this. So as you're picking out your seed beads and you do this all the way around, pick out your thicker ones. Um, you know, not all seed beads are the same width, same thickness. So you want to kind of pick out your, th your thicker ones for this seg sec segment. I'll get that word out in here in a second. All right, like so. Well, those holes are just trying to hide on me today. Um, you know what? I think this is awfully mean. This one actually does not have a hole. <laughs> No wonder I couldn't get that one to work. <laughs> That's only about the third crystal in my entire 10-year career at, up to this point that I have run into without a hole. Of course, I'd do it on camera. Okay, so here's my last one that I'm adding in. My two colors of seed bead ended up being so close you can't can barely see a, a difference. So there's a little bit of difference there. Then what I want to do is I want to add a seed bead in between each one of these pearls. So I'm going to move forward through a crystal, through a seed bead, and through the center seed bead there. I want to be coming out one of those center seed beads. I'm going to move down the side and then through a pearl. Okay. Because so the other reason for adding uh, um, a seed bead in between here Number one is stability. It tightens it up. But also you can see that you can see a little bit of thread through here. And it's not a terrible thing, but by adding a seed bead in there, we can completely cover that up. So there's, there's two benefits here. Again, you have a choice of whether you're using your accent color or your main color seed bead. 
And again, sizing wise, you probably want to pick your thicker seed beads as you're going around here and doing this. All right. So that finishes off that end. So there's here's the finished off side, and there's the unfinished side. So you can see that it just visually it just finishes it off in a really pretty way. Then you're going to move over to the opposite side and do the exact same thing. So to do that, I'm going to come up one of these side beads here, seed beads. Come across the center seed bead. And then I would just move down this side through a purl and add all of the same beads in there. After I've done that, and I'm, gonna, I'm just going to skip ahead, you need to go ahead and do that, but I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead. There's one last thing that I like to do on this. Um, these crystals are going to get a lot of wear and tear because, you know, they're on the edge of your bracelet. So this is going to get knocked around quite a bit. Also, depending on your tension, the, there might be a little bit of extra thread showing up in here. So the easiest, one of the best things to do is take a moment and actually pass through all of these seed beads and crystals along this top edge a second time and pull them nice and tight and snug while you do that. It makes a huge, huge difference. You'll see how much tighter the, the crystals will sit by doing this and also it'll suck up any extra thread that might be showing. Um, so what I usually do is I will start out with my needle coming into one of the crystals and usually then I can catch the crystal plus the next three seed beads in one motion and I just give it a nice hard tug when I do that. Then the last thing that we're doing by doing this in addition to tightening it up and making it more sturdy is we're basically creating a way to end off our thread without having to do too much extra. So I go around until I feel like it's pretty nice and snug. I usually like one to one and a half extra times I'll go through there. And then think about it. Your thread is never going to come undone through all of this, all of these beads, right? Plus you've done the weaving on the two sides and everything. So at this point, I can just snip that thread off. And this is a completed slider satellite bead pretty addictive. Let me tell you, you see the big lines of sliders that I've made. Um, I really can't stop myself. It's one of those things that you just have a lot of fun making. So go ahead and make your sliders. And when we come back, I will tell you how we're going to make, I'll walk you through making um, the end caps and we'll talk about the clasp. So now, hopefully you have got all your sliders done. I'm going to guess you have even more than what was in your kit because, like I said, they're addictive. Um, so let's work on creating the end caps and then attaching all the pieces and parts together with your clasp. The end caps are really easy. Let's take a closer look here. Uh, people, I think, get really intimidated by making end caps, but you know what? This is a simple peyote project. We're going to start this out with tubular peyote. Um, and we're only making, let's see here, five, six rows of tubular peyote. And then we're going to do two rounds of decrease and boom, we have an end cap. So it's really, really easy and fast to do. So you're going to start out here by picking up 16 of your seed beads. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, oop, eight, nine, ten, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. You notice that I would, did go ahead and put a stopper bead on my thread before I started this because that's an awful lot of beads to try to control without a stopper bead. So I want to turn these into a circle. So I'm going to go from the tail end back up through all of them. This will take you more than one pass. There's no way you're going to get through all 16 of those beads at once. So we're just going to keep going around the circle here. Keep going around. And then you're going to move one bead past your tail. So here's where the tail is coming out because that's where the, the, the stopper bead is. And I want to move one bead past that like so. 
And at this point, um, this is now a completed circle, and you can actually just pull that stopper bead off the end of your tail there uh, if it get in, gets in your way. So doing, getting um, tubular peyote started can be a little bit of a trick for some people. So using some kind of dowel works well. We have that dowel that we used for the sliders. That will certainly work. But you know what else you have at this point? You also probably already have your rope. So you know what? Your rope is actually going to be the perfect size because, of course, this is meant to go over your rope. So I actually frequently will use my rope as a dowel to work with here, which is what I'm going to do right now. Okay, so I'm looking here and my thread is coming out of this bead in this direction. So I am going to peyote around this bead, I'm sorry, this um, line of seed beads here. So I'm picking up a bead, I'm skipping one for it to sit next to, and I'm passing through the next one. I do not care on this particular round if these sit out off to the side, okay? They're, it kind of just sticks out like this. Totally fine, we don't care. Because on the next round, that's when we're actually going to um, make it all sit vertical if it doesn't all automatically. Now in this particular case, this one, they're kind of sitting vertical on me right off the bat. When I did one last night, they were slightly different kinds of seed beads. They didn't have this coating on them, so they were a little more slippery. Uh, they did not want to go vertical at all. They wanted to sit off to the side. So it may just depend on what kind of beads you're using here. So we will peyote all the way around. And I can kind of use my thumb to kind of pinch them up and s make them sit upward since they are cooperating with me today. The other thing to remember here as you're doing this, when you pick up the first round of 16 seed beads, that is actually two rows of peyote. So because as we're adding, so we're skipping one, passing through the next one. So as we're adding this next row, we're making one of those beads kind of sit down farther so that we have sticky outies on either side. So it goes from a single to a double, from single to a double. So this is actually is the third row that we're adding right now, okay? So you, that's an important thing for you to know. Here is the last bead of this row that I just I'm adding here. And now what I have to do is called a step up. So I have to get to one of the sticky outy beads on top to add my next row. So all I have to do here is pass through that very next sticky outy right there. So our fourth row is going to be exactly the same. We're just going to go around with peyote stitch with the same color. And just so you know, you can actually adjust the height of these end caps. Say, for instance, you wanted one that was a little taller uh, by just continuing to add more rows before you went to your decrease rows. Um, now, altering the diameter of the end cap is a little more challenging because then you have to change your decrease. And so that is kind of a whole nother creature. Um, okay, so here I am adding the last stitch of row four. I can tell that because I've got a big deep V action going on right here. So I'm skipping one for the new bead to sit on top of, and then I'm passing through the next two beads so that I'm coming out the top sticky outy. And then for our fifth row, what we're going to do is do use the accent color. Uh, the only reason I'm doing that is simply for a little decoration and to pull that accent color in a little bit more. Um, it's just a fun little detail to add in. But as far as the stitch itself, it is all exactly the same. Oops, there's that one and one more. This is my last one on this row. So I'm skipping one for it to sit on top of, 
passing through the next two so that I'm coming out the top sticky outy. Then we're going to add a sixth row, identical to the others. We're going to switch back to our main color. This is going to be the last row before our decrease. Almost there. Okay, here's my last one of this row. Skipping one for it to sit on top of, going through the next two. Now, at this point, I'm going to have to pull it off of the dowel or your rope or whatever because now we're going to create that flat top. Um, there's two rows uh, to do this. The first row, what we're going to do is we're going to pick up a seed bead. We're going to take that peyote stitch, and then we're going to pass through two sticky outies. Basically, what I'm doing is I am not putting a bead where I normally would between these two sticky outies. So, and so what there's two ways of doing that. One is the mine is the cheater way, where I just go through two of these beads. What's going to happen is my thread is going to show right on top of that bead right there. But as we create the fold over on this end, the thread is all going to suck in and you're not going to see it. If that freaks you out, the other way to do this is to just take this peyote stitch with a single stitch and then just pass down through the bead below and then up through the bead above. So you can actually stitch through that V gap if that bothers you to have your thread show temporarily right there. I'm going to do it the cheater way, which is picking up one, passing through one sticky outy, passing through the second sticky outy. Okay. You're only going to be adding four beads here since you're skipping every other uh, spot for a bead to, to sit in. So that was my third. Here's my fourth one that I'm adding. So I'm picking it up. I'm passing through, and then here's where I'm skipping is this spot right here. Oop, you know what? Actually, I totally lied. I'm not there yet. So let's see here. I'm picking up. Oh, yeah, it is. Okay. So I'm picking up. I'm going through the sticky outy. Here is my deep V gap that is my last um, skip that's already there. So I'm just going to pass across and then up through two so that I'm coming out the top sticky outy. Okay, so here we are. We've got four sticky outies. One, two, three, four. Excellent. Let's switch back to the accent color and we're just going to move from those four tip beads, adding an accent color bead between each one of them. Like so. Notice that I'm not worrying too much about tightening in or anything. I'm going to do all that afterwards. I just want to make sure that I'm getting all of the right beads, that I'm passing through the correct beads on that tip as I do this. So here's my last bead that I need to add for the tip. Here's the accent color that I added on the opposite side of that, which means that that's the bead that I need to go through, okay? So, and then as I tighten up, there we go. Now it all fo folded over, it all comes in on the center, and you've got this beautiful end cap. You want to reinforce this tip uh, for two reasons. One is it's going to make all of the beads sit really nice and tightly together. Secondly, because we're going to add attach the clasp to this top, and so we want to make sure it's nice and strong. So the first time that I reinforce, I go around all eight beads here at the top, meaning the accent color and the main color as I go all the way around. And this makes a huge difference in making it nice and tight and, st and um, sturdy is a good word to use. It just pulls everything in really nicely. And then the second time that I go around, I'm going to try to go through just those four accent colors right in the very tip. 
and because this starts getting nice and tight in there, since you tightened up on that last round, sometimes you kind of have to play to get the angle to get your needle through the bead a little bit. So you can kind of come at it from the inside, you can come at it from the outside, just however you can get the angle to get your needle through that bead, like so. Then what happens at that point is you are in the perfect position when you're coming out one of these accent colors on the top. Those are going to be where we're going to attach your clasp. So you've got two that are sitting right across from each other, okay? So the one that I'm coming out of now here, and then I would also attach it to this next one that's coming, that's directly across. And let me show you what that looks like. Here we'll switch to this gold. In this case, my accent color was the cream here, and my seed beads are the gold. So let me kind of walk you through this. So I'm coming out of one of these side cream beads. I picked up three seed beads. I'm passing through two on a diagonal through my peyote tube toggle. Uh, there is a separate video for how to make this peyote tube toggle. I will pop a link up for you so that you can see how to make that. So I, I picked up the three. I went through two on the diagonal here. I picked up a single and I came back through that center seed bead there. Picked up one more seed bead so that I could kind of create this figure X with, see how this, these, um, create this X with a single bead in the center there. So this was the last one that I picked up and then I passed through the accent color bead on the opposite side of the tip top of the end cap. So it's a very simple thing to do. My rule of thumb when I'm attaching a clasp is I always want three passes of thread through there. So I would just weave back through over to this side again, reinforce that same thread path and do it a third time and reinforce the thread path. At which point you are ready to, actually I'm going to switch gears here and I'll show you how we're going to attach this end cap to the rope itself. So here I've already done my reinforcing up here and I wove my needle down to where it's coming out. Eh, it doesn't really matter actually where it's coming out. I like to attach this end cap kind of towards the bottom here as opposed to attaching it up here just because this tends to make it feel a little more solid if it's attached right down at the tip here. So you just want to weave it down so you're coming out one of these last two rows of seed beads on the bottom. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to fit my end into the end cap. I want to make sure it's up nice and flush against the end. I want it to stick in as far as possible. And then this is the part that just seems like it should be a lot harder, but all we're going to do is we're going to take our needle and we're going to literally stab through the beads. So I'm just finding a spot right where I'm coming out of that bead, a hole, and I'm going to stab right through the beads right to the other side. So I want to make sure that I'm catching, getting my needle through the rope. Obviously I am because it's centered, right? And I'm just stabbing on through. I'm going to pass through a couple of beads on this side. I just want to pick beads that are pretty close to where my thread is coming out of the rope. So one, two, and then I'm going to do the exact same thing here. Make sure it's set nice and deeply in there, tighten it on up. Thread's coming out right there, so we'll just stab right through there. Sometimes you have to wiggle it a little bit until it finds a hole on the opposite side. And I am just going to do this back and forth a couple of times. It's basically, I'm tacking this down. Um, we're sewing it together. The reason that we have to do it this way is because if you look at your beads, in herringbone, all the bead holes are going vertical. In peyote stitch, all the holes are going horizontal. So trying to attach a horizontal bead to a vertical bead in a method that doesn't show a lot of thread can be a bit of a challenge. This way, all of the thread that's showing is on the inside of um, our end cap, and so you can't see it at all. So I'll just continue stabbing back and forth until I feel like when I kind of give this a tug, I want to make sure that it feels nice and solid. And really, this is only my, what, my fourth pass, I think, and already it feels completely solid. I might do it another one or two times just to make sure. 
Uh, but that's all, really all it takes to attach that end cap. Then you're just going to weave back and forth through your peyote stitch. And my rule of thumb when I'm ending off thread and peyote stitch is I want to reverse directions at least three times and tr cross back over itself once. So in this case, let's say that this is um, completely ready to go and I'm ready to end this. So what I will do is I will reverse directions. At this point, your beads might be getting kind of full of thread here. So sometimes it is easier to move just a single bead at a time when the beads are getting nice and full of thread. So now let me reverse directions again. I know that my thread can sit right along this intersection between these two beads. So I will just go through the bead right next door to it so that thread sucks up in there. And then let's do the same thing this direction. This is our, my crossover. Now I'm crossing over where I was before, like so. And now this thread is ready to cut off, and that's all ready to go. You want to make sure, of course, that you add your sliders before you add the end cap on the opposite side, OK? And to create the loop, let me switch over to this sample. We're doing basically the same thing. We are. Um, Picking up a couple of seed beads, I, for my crossover bead here, I use the accent color. It's your choice. You can use the accent color or the main color for your crossover bead. Then I picked up a number of seed beads for my loop. Um, everybody's loop is going to be a little bit different, probably. I will include in the instructions the exact number that I picked up, just to give you a starting point. You might want yours a little looser or a little bit tighter. Then I pass back through that crossover bead picked up two, and here's where you can see that these are attached right here. One is attached to this bead of the accent color. One is attached to this bead of the accent color. So they're opposite from each other, and uh, that's how we get that nice X effect going on. Then when I came back to reinforce the second time, I did peyote stitch around the loop with the same color seed bead. Then I came back to reinforce the third time, and when I went to go do the peyote stitch around for the third reinforcement, I picked up two of the accent colors in each one of those spaces instead of picking up a single bead. So it's still just peyote stitch, picking up two, passing through the next sticky outy, picking up two, passing through the next sticky outy. It gives it, it, it because it's gotten wider out there on that outside edge, there's enough room for those beads to sit. And so it gives it a kind of a fan effect, and it's very pretty. Then I would just weave my thread back down into the end cap and end off the thread. And then you are ready to wear your fabulous satellites bracelet. So that's it. Uh, lots of little steps, but none of them are hard. So this is something that you can make. Um, you know, you use the kit that you bought with Jewelry TV for yourself or for a friend for a gift, you know. And then you've got the instructions to play with these sliders and make as many as you like. I hope you really enjoy making this as much as I enjoy designing it. And happy beating to all of you.